Hey gang, Stephen Marshall from KentuckyLandlordLaw.com, KYLandlordLaw.com. Uh, if you're on my email list, you woke up to an email this morning uh, giving some uh, suggestions on how to deal with and respond to uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. And things have changed a little bit since I've sent that email. This situation is, is fluid. Uh, things are changing by the day and by the hour. So I wanted to follow up that email uh, with just some uh, additional suggestions and kind of talk through uh, these things a little bit more. Uh, the most important thing uh, that came out or the most uh, uh, interesting thing that came out in my email was that last night the Kentucky Supreme Court issued an order postponing all non-emergency court hearings, including evictions. And that takes effect on Monday, March the 16th, and it will run through uh, Friday, April 10th, which means Monday, April the 13th, will be the next eviction docket uh, after today. Today's cases went on. It is my understanding from talking to the judges that you won't have any trouble getting writs next week for cases uh, on which you got a judgment this week. Uh, the judges will still be in their office, able to sign documents, able to issue writs. Uh, it is my expectation that we will continue to be able to file cases. I don't know that for a fact, but that is my expectation. Uh, the courts are not closing. They're simply uh, pushing non-emergency hearings back several weeks. So the clerks will still be working. We should still be able to file cases. It's just that we will not be able to get a court date for you uh, immediately. It is my expectation, again, I'm just kind of guessing and reasoning here, I haven't heard this yet, that the evictions that were scheduled for Monday, March the 16th, will automatically be moved to Monday, April the 13th, and then the evictions that were scheduled for March the 17th will go to April the 14th, etc., etc., on down the line, uh, just kind of in, a, in an order of first come, first serve. So my suggestion is to continue to file your eviction so that they get in line, so to speak. Uh, I haven't gotten any word as to whether there may be some additional eviction dockets added uh, when court resumes their regular hearings on April the 13th. Uh, as this information develops uh, and I get it, I'll make it available to you just as soon as possible. So my thought for now is that evictions will continue to be filed. Uh, in the email yesterday, I gave some general best practices here. I'm just kind of looking over my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, and most of these are just directly from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control website. I suggest that you bookmark that page, uh, go there frequently, refer to it as needed. And what they've told us generally is, is we need to disinfect and clean all of our touched areas, all of our public areas, uh, do the, up your cleaning protocols. Do it at least daily. Uh, you're in closed common areas. If your rental units are in an enclosed building, you're going to want to be cleaning those hallways, elevators, entrance and exit doors. Do that at least daily, if not more often. Uh, <clears throat> keep your distance from people. Okay, It is highly abnormal for us uh, to be six feet away from people when we're having conversation. It's highly abnormal not to shake hands or uh, to do something like that, but you got to do it. Okay, that's, that's the best practices. If you can get your hands on hand sanitizer, keep that stuff uh, all over the place. People will be more likely to use it if it's out. Close your community rooms, your business center, your fitness center, all of your common area rooms where people would, get, would gather, go in and out, just close those areas until further notice. <coughs> if you've got any social events on the calendar, my suggestion, cancel them, or excuse me, postpone them um, until a later date. If you have an elderly population, okay, this is not just senior housing, but if you have a significant elderly population, especially if you're in an enclosed building, I suggest that you limit visitation. Okay, this is, this is per uh, suggestions that are coming out of Frankfurt uh, and across the nation that you limit visitation. It's already happening in nursing homes and in prisons. Uh, I suggest you limit visitation to one person who's a family member, a caregiver, or a healthcare professional, one at a time. Um, and I think that's the wisest. 
if you have uh, a maintenance request from a resident, I think it is entirely fair to ask if they're having any flu-like symptoms. Okay, if they're not, you go on with the maintenance request uh, as requested according to your normal schedule. But if they do, I think that you can postpone any non-essential maintenance items until after that person has been cleared by their, by their healthcare professional. Okay, so if there's flooding, if you've got heat issues, if it's particularly cold, uh, I'm assuming this thing is going to be done by summer, so I don't think a lack of AC is going to be a is going to be an issue. But if you've got any emergency maintenance situations, I don't think you can postpone those. But what you can do is you can require that the resident be quarantined to a back room where the work's not going to be done. Uh, <clears throat> make sure that your maintenance folks know that they're entering a room or entering a unit where the person has experienced some type of illness or is not feeling well, so that they can take appropriate precautions, they can disinfect the area that they're going to be working in. Okay, uh, we want them to, to be aware of what's going on so that they can take the precautions uh, set forth by the CDC for preventing the spread of the illness. Now, what we're gonna be seeing more and more is we're going to be seeing people who have actually been exposed to the coronavirus. You may not have had that yet, uh, but it's going to happen. Okay, there are just going to be more and more cases, uh, more and more confirmed cases, and more and more people who have been exposed, if not outright uh, tested positive for the virus. So when that happens again, you're probably not going to know unless they self-report it. But once you find out about it, have them follow CDC guidelines, and what that's going to mean for them is that they're supposed to self-quarantine. Okay, that they stay inside, uh, preferably in a particular room, and not go out, not leave their unit except for medical appointments. Okay, they hopefully will be arranging with family or other community services uh, to have groceries and things like that delivered to them, but they need to be self-quarantining. Request that that resident notify you when they're going to be leaving their unit. That way you can follow behind them uh, in short order and clean and disinfect the common areas through which they travel. Elevators, uh, entrance and exit doors, those types of things. You want to get those disinfected pretty quickly and hopefully you can coordinate with the resident uh, to do that quickly after they pass through. If they refuse to self-quarantine, contact the local health department. Okay, The health department can potentially issue a directive to that person to quarantine themselves. And then if they violate the health department's directive, the health department can potentially pursue an injunction from a court to keep them in their unit. Uh, so I think that's that's kind of the, the process and the remedy that we'd want to follow on that. Also, if you've got, if you have noticed that that one of your residents has been exposed, I think you need to notify your entire community. Okay, if it's just exposure, notify them that someone has been exposed. If someone's tested positive, notify them of that, okay? We wanna tell the truth and keep our residents informed. That way, they will be extra vigilant in following those CDC guidelines to prevent spread to themselves and to others. Uh, the CDC website has a PDF that you can print out. My suggestion is that you give that to all your residents up front right now, uh, just as a best practice to keep them informed of what they need to be doing. But especially if you get someone who's been exposed uh, or is tested positive, get that notice out to your residents and attach a copy of the CDC PDF uh, to your notice. So I think those are probably the best practices right now. Uh, but beyond that, bottom line, you have to be a voice of calm. Okay, your residents are worried. Your staff members may be worried. And there is reason to be concerned, okay? We still don't know exactly what we're dealing with with this virus. Things continue to change. And what we can expect is that there are going to be more and more confirmed cases. That's simply going to happen. And we have to be ready for that. And we have to be ready for the worry that's going to come with that. And so we've gotta be a voice of calm uh, as that happens. We need steady leadership 
at the helm, and you can be that at your property. Uh, I'm gonna be communicating with you as things develop on our end to kind of give you some ideas on what, what probably the best practices are, so stay tuned to kylandlordlaw.com. But the bottom line, stay calm. We're gonna make it through this. Reach out to me if you need me. Take care.